billet box style all-in-ones. We've looked at a number of them um, last year, and we looked at one last week, and it was this little fella here. It's the Cthulhu AIO box, and this was released about a week, it was either a week before or a week after Vandy Vape released their Tony B Pulse AIO, which is Vandy Vape and Tony B's spin on what the billet box AIO is. Now, the Cthulhu AIO that I reviewed last week comes as standard as essentially a mouth-to-lung platform. You can kind of, kind of get direct to lung from the standard borrow tank that comes in here, but it's a very, very, very restrictive direct to lung. However, at the same time that this got released, Cthulhu released this, the 520 borrow tank, which is another borrow, you see it, it's another borrow tank style tank, but this one is definitely built for direct to lung rebuilding. So, how well does this perform? And more importantly, what happens when you put this inside this? Let's find out. It's time for a, technically speaking, it is a tank, so it's time for a tank review. The tech specs for the Cthulhu 520 borrow tank. So it's a borrow tank, which basically means it will fit inside basically anything that's based off the billet box style system, including the billet box itself. You will also get a PNP and the uh, a PNP and a Aspire Nautilus adapter included, but let's face it, it's actually based off of a off of a rebuildable platform. Capacity of the tank is anywhere, again, depending on what you've got in, whether the rebuildable platform head, a PNP coil, or an Aspire Nautilus coil, it could be anywhere between 4.5 up to 6 mil in capacity because this is actually taking up a lot of space, but all that's gone when you pop in the stock coil option. Bottom airflow based, and there's airflow insertable pins from 0.8 millimeter all the way up to the biggest of 4.5 millimeter. So if you were to run out and get your hands on the 520 tank on the retail market, what are you gonna get? So you have got this little fella. You've also got your 510 adapter, so you can screw the base into here and then screw this into a 510 build platform to dry burn your coils. You've also got this, again, I'll show you what this is for when we take everything apart. You have got a base, as you can see. And here you have got a little blue screwdriver, a bunch of spare O-rings and a couple of spare grub screws. Nothing else going on under here, as you can see. And then you've got all of these, and there is a lot of airflow options. Let's pull all these out, and we'll have a look at what's going on here. So many airflow options with this thing. Pull that out, and pull that out. So, where are we here? Let's zoom this all the way in, and we'll line these up in order of size. So many airflow options with this. You can tell that this thing was designed to do direct to lung as well as, because look at the size of that, that's a pinhole. But you can tell this was designed to do direct to lung as well. And there we go. In fact, yeah, those last two are in the right order. So you've got wide open, that's basically a 3.5 millimeter hole. And then it goes all the way down to the pinhole down here at the bottom. So you can rig this to be a mouth to lung build platform. But let's be honest, when you have a look at the thing inside, you can immediately tell it was basically designed for direct to lunging. I am going to grab that and put the big one to one side and all the rest of these, I'm gonna pop back in the little box again. So. Let's have a look at the tank itself. The 520 tank with Cthulhu's logo stamped on the side. At the top, you've got the retainer hole that the top of the screw thing screws into. You've got your fill hole there. Nice wide fill hole so anyone... Pull that out, Vic, so it focuses in. Nice wide fill hole so anyone with older style Gorilla bottles will have zero issues actually using this thing. All the way around, nice clean borrow tank. There we go. And then down here at the base, you have got this odd thing going on. So... 
The way this is working out, do I have, I've left it on the table because I'm an idiot, hold on, you have got your bottle tank, right? And then you've got your actual AIO. So the way that these work for the newer people that are new to the channel, the way that these work is very simple. The tank actually sits inside the mod and what you do is you unscrew this and you pop this in here like that and then you screw the top down and that basically clamps everything down. But you've probably noticed something odd with what's going on down here. The back is completely sealed off. One of the major issues that haunts borrow tank style systems is if they've got a fully open back, condensation ends up forming down here at the base of the actual recess. And what Cthulhu decided to do is limit where the air is coming in. Limit it to the side, if there's a side air intake, and a lot of AIOs like this have a side air intake, or limit it to the front. And the way that this particular AIO works is, if we get the door the right way around, this front part here actually lines up with the air intakes at the front here. So what they've done is they have done two major air intakes at the front for this and at the side for other borrow tank and the, the majority actually of borrow tank style systems that have the air insert holes at the side. They've blocked the back off. So any condensation that forms down here is not gonna soak the back of your mod. Thumbs up. To Cthulhu for doing that by the way and I'm surprised no one else has done that I'm very surprised no one else has done this so let's have a look down here at the base you've got your air intake going on in there as you can see nothing much fancy going on there if we pull the base off there's the main base if we compare that to the spare base the spare base has got the front and the back fully open this is basically a standard borrow tank base, as you can see, wide open at the... I don't know why you would use this over this, to be honest, but you've got the option there in case you want to use it. If we give this a wiggle, we'll pull out the build platform. There is your main chamber. We'll give this another wiggle to pull them. In fact, you know what? Just push it from the top, Vic, because you're lazy. Hold on. There we go. There is the main top section. This unscrews, so you can take it off completely. There we go. Let's have a look at the main chamber itself. Nothing fancy, squared off top, which is what you would expect for a borrow tank chamber. Squared off top, they could have done the finishing a bit better, to be honest. Maybe a couple of more rounds with the sandpaper, but yeah, it's looking not too bad. But let's move on to the more important part. The build deck. And this is a very, very interesting system they've got going on here. So it's a two poster, which is what you would expect. Juice intake there juice intake there, which means your wick hole is there. Well, wick hole, it's basically a wick recess, but you've got your wick recess there, wick recess there. So if your coil is basically going to be sitting kind of like that, at kind of an angle. Now, there was other Cthulhu build platforms that done this same angled configuration as well and they've kept this going with the 520 platform but what we're going to do we're going to find a coil to actually pop in this what are we going to use here um that's mouth to lung aliens that's going to be completely useless for that deck fuse clapton we'll use a fuse clapton so let's get a fuse clapton out here from of course proper coils sponsor of the uk vape show and what we're going to have to do here is, how are we going to do these legs? We are going to have to do, should we add a wrap or remove a wrap? I'm thinking we should probably add a wrap onto this. I don't want to remove a wrap. So where is my, I really need to clean up that. There we go. This is, 2.5 or is it three millimeter? I think it's a three millimeter coil. Yep, three millimeter coil. We are going to take off that kink and we're going to continue wrapping that round. Just like that. Doesn't need to be perfect because this is the leg that's going in to the actual post hole. Now we're going to screw this on here. 
pull the zoom out and I need my Red Stag build tab, which I actually finally remember to charge. Now let's pop you on here. So, wick hole, wick hole, which means the coil is basically going to be sitting like that. So what we need to do, it's very odd the way that they've built this and it's going to feel very odd building on it because you're actually popping the coil in at an angle. You're not popping it in straight, but this was the way that Cthulhu figured out to get around the problem with the wicking for borrow tanks like this because a lot of these borrow tanks for the direct to lung what generally tends to happen is holes are punched at the top of the actual chamber and juice is allowed to spill down through the chamber and hit the cotton and you've got to put a lot of cotton in with these older style of borrow tanks but you put a lot of cotton that fills up the top of this chamber the juice dribbles down the holes drilled into the top and then soaks into your coil with this you're not using as much cotton, which means the break-in period is a lot more quicker for this particular build platform. Just to give you a close-up, that little ledge there, there's the little ledge that helps hold the leg in. Very good posts on this. Very good posts on this. So let's pull that out and pull that out. Then we're going to get a coil here. Doesn't matter what way around we do this because we'll just figure it out as we go along. Pop that leg in there, and that leg in. I haven't pulled that screw out enough. You get the leg over the ledge. There we go. Leg is now over the ledge. Right, we're going to hold that in place, and we're going to screw down that one. Don't worry if your coil moves around, by the way. We'll sort that once the legs are clamped in. There's one. Spin you around, and then we will... Screw down the other one. Just like that. There we go. Now, what we need to do... I'm going to unscrew this. I don't trust myself with this because there's been a number of times I've hit the fire button by accident with the coil in place and practically burnt myself. So I'm actually going to take this off to stop myself doing that. And what we're going to do here is we are going to snap the legs off. Uh, like that. Nice and close. There we go. Same with the other side. Nice and close. Like that. Then we're going to take this out unscrew the base and we are going to get our airflow control pole oops going to get our airflow control pole in fact you know what that might be a bit too airy for me you probably noticing there's no airflow control in this the airflow is set with the inset we're going to go and no, that's too small where's the two millimeter one two millimeter where are you is that it i think that's it yeah that's it two millimeter air hole we're going to pop this in here like that then we're going to get the cap Screw that on, and there we go. You can see the air hole intake down there, which means, yes, you can not alter the airflow poles with the coil and wick in place very, very easily. Let's sort this coil out now. Give it a wiggle and push it down. Just like that. Push it down all the way. And as you can see, once you've done that, your coil is about two millimetres over the top of the air hole inlet. And now what we can do is put the 510 base back on. Screw this back in. It just looks weird having the coil sitting at an angle like that. Very weird. Da -da -da. Come on. See, fully charged. Yay! Only took me three months to remember to charge the damn thing. Right, we're going to go in at 39 watts, not too high. And give this a very slow dry burn, working from the inside out, waiting on the rainbow happening. Quick rake at the top. Quick rake at the bottom. One rake along the top. And we're done. Any hot spots in this inside? Nope. 
Okay, wicking this. Uh, wicking this is going to be super easy. You don't need a lot of cotton. You've got your juice intake here and your juice intake here. So if you overstuff the wicking pit, which is what I like to call it, you're going to choke off the juice supply. And you don't want to choke off the juice supply with a setup like this because if you get a dry hit from this, you're going to know about it. You are really going to know about it. So I am going to use not a lot of cotton because it's not going to need that much. Feed that through. Oh, come on. Feed that through there. Pull it through. And we're going to use the base as a guide to how short we're going to cut this. We are going to cut this level with the corner of the base. Just resting the scissors against it, as you can see, and then snipping. We're not going to do a rake from this either. You're going to need all of this cotton, and it's just a simple case of teasing the cotton down, like that, same with the other side, teasing the cotton down, not putting too much pressure on it, just until you feel that cotton start to hit the base and then stop. Don't force the cotton in because you're just going to compress it and get lots and lots of dry hits. There we go. And as you can see, juice intake has got lots of cotton. Juice intake has got lots of cotton. Done and dusted. Very simple to whack on. And we're not using a lot of cotton here, folks. This is empty. I need another bottle of juice. Hold on. Uh, where is the midnight oil? I've actually got a bottle of midnight oil. I'm sure I did. Where the hell did I put it? That is going to annoy me. There was a bottle of midnight oil here and I can't bloody find it now. Am I going to have to use black vine? Damn it, I'm going to have to use black vine, ain't I? And I'm trying to save this. Is that... Ah, found it. Midnight oil. There we go. I'm running low on black vine again. So I don't want to use too much of it. So I'm going to use Rochford Project's midnight oil. Soak up the wick, let that expand out and fill all the gaps. Little bit of juice onto the coil, quick fire, let it soak in. Juice onto the coil, quick fire, let that soak in. And keep doing that. And you can see the cotton is now nice saturated. Take this off without getting your fingers covered in e-liquid. Then we will get this. Then we pop this into the chamber, give that a wiggle, that might be the other way around, come on, you can give this a wiggle so it clips in, there we go, top of the chamber in, and then we get the base, and we pop the base on like that, oh, we might need to twist this round because that's a little bit, there we go, twist that round, Base is in, everything's all squished down, and there we go, that's your 520 tank, coiled up, wicked up and ready to go. Let's pop some more midnight oil in here, just to cover up the base. Done and dusted, then we'll get our Cthulhu AIO, pop the 520 into the Cthulhu AIO. Where did I put the top in this thing? There it is. Screw the drip tip and the retainer nut in to hold the tank in place. And let's head back up top. So I just realised while I was editing this, because I'm an idiot, that I completely forgot to mention what these are for. These are actually adapters. Um, it's base, the 520 is basically a rebuildable platform. However, these adapters allow you to use the PNP coils from Vupu, or you can actually pop a Nautilus coil in here as well. So there's one adapter for PNP coils and the other adapter is going to be for the Nautilus, As well, the Aspire Nautilus coils. So if you don't want to use the 520 as a rebuildable platform, and to be honest, if you're going to be buying this, you're probably going to be buying it as a rebuildable platform. But, you know, maybe one day you're feeling lazy and you can't be bothered re-wicking and recoiling. You've got these, which will allow you to use the very common Nautilus Aspire coils, uh, sorry, Aspire Nautilus coils, or the even more common PNP coils, which there seems to be adapters for PNP coils for practically every single system out there. So that's what these little fellas are for. Yes. 
Before we head into the rest of the review, in order to keep vaping with Vic independent, in other words, not get paid by the manufacturer to do the review, it relies on people like you. Vaping with Vic is an independent, self-employed business registered here in the UK, and right now I'm sitting inside a dedicated studio in an office that I'm renting just outside the town centre of where I'm living. If you like what you see and you want to keep the channel going, there's links down below to either Patreon, Subscribestar, or even the YouTube members. And people who sign up to the hashtag Froof Army uh, get, uh, get access to the private uh, basically Q&A live shows that happen roughly every weekend and they also get access to boxaways, giveaways and all sorts of other goodies. That's it for me folks, back on to the review. Now you see why I took the 520 and decided to spin it off into its own review because if I bundled the 520 review in with the already rebuildable platform, for the Cthulhu AIO, the video would have been far too long, far too long for a review of the AIO itself. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be bumping the wattage up on this because it is a 0.3 ohm coil. I'm going to be bumping the wattage in this up to 55 watts. And we're off 520 build platform borrow tank on the Cthulhu AIO at 55 watts. And here we go. Damn, that's all I'm going to oh, oh. Midnight oil, for the people that don't know, is a, it's one of the new juices from Rochford Project. It is essentially a vanilla latte. And it's not the burnt toast coffee that we all recognise from vaping coffee-flavoured vapes. It actually tastes like a vanilla latte with a slight hint of chocolate and a very, very subtle hint of chocolate in the but Oh, it's so good. And this thing makes it taste phenomenal. It really does. I've always said it would end up being another Rochford project juice that would bump Black Vine off my favourite list. I am slowly... I'm slow. I don't know if I'm going to stop vaping black vine, but oh, this midnight oil is phenomenal. This turned into a juice review and it shouldn't have. Sorry, Cthulhu. <laughs> so there we go, folks. That flavour, though, is phenomenal. That was the 520 Borrow Tank build platform from Cthulhu in the Cthulhu AIO. Oh, what do I think of this? The eyes and the nose. I can't think of anything wrong with this. I mean, granted, when you're putting the coil in, you've got the build base straight, but you're moving the coil and dropping the coil in at what is essentially a 45 degree angle relative to the straightness of the base. It's odd. It's very odd the way that they've done this, but because they've managed to figure out a way to have the coil sitting in the base, and wicking the coil and dropping the cotton down as a normal tank base, instead of having to wangle the coil, wangle the cotton around so there's enough cotton to reach the top of the chamber and having the wicking coming in from the top of the chamber dripping down, it means that this is one of the easiest direct to lung borrow tank build platform bases on the mainstream that's been released for a long time. Once you get used to having the coil put in at an angle and dropped in, it's, it's super easy to coil and wick on. Super easy to coil and wick on. One of the downsides could be that there is no airflow control ring on this per se because the airflow is basically controlled with the airflow inserts. But again, because of the way that Cthulhu decided to do this, you can... If you're not happy with the way that the airflow is working, you can take the borrow tank out, give the base a wiggle, turn the whole tank upside down first, that would help, give the base a wiggle, and you can unscrew that, take the airflow pole out, put a new airflow pole in, 
screw the retainer nut on, get your base again, pop it in, and that's you done. You don't need to empty the tank, you don't need to pull the coil out because the airflow pole is put in from the bottom. It's not put in from the top. Now, could they have made this a little bit better by putting some kind of airflow control ring down here? Yes, but if they put an airflow control ring down here, they wouldn't have been able to do this with the base. In other words, blocking the back off to stop the back of your mod being soaked out with condensation. So it was give and take on Cthulhu's part. Personally, I would go with the two millimeter air pole. You're gonna get a restrictive direct along, but I would go with the two millimeter air pole because remember, it's a single point of contact for air. There's no honeycomb air inset with this. It's a single point of contact with the air hitting the dead center. So you want lots of air pressure to pound the middle of the coil. That way you get your flavor. I mean, you could go with the three millimeter air hole post, but you might end up losing a touch of flavor with that. Just a little bit of flavor compared to the two millimeter air hole. Mm. That is a lot of vapour for a borrow tank based system. And there we go, that's a damn good flavour from that. That was the 520 build platform from Cthulhu. If you are a fan of the billet box, and it is a standard, oh, wrong side, it is a standard billet box sized borrow tank. So this will work on the billet box and billet box clones. If you're looking for another mainstream alternative build platform for your borrow or your borrow tank based or billet box based system, you've got the option there with the 520. And, and if you've got the existing Cthulhu AIO, if you get your hands on the 520 build platform, as you've seen down in the table cam, there is mouth to lung airflow inserts. How well does this platform perform as a mouth-to-lung tank? I'll be honest, I prefer the tank this comes with when it comes to mouth-to-lung. If you're gonna get this 520 tank, you're gonna get it for direct-to-lung. That's what you're gonna get it for. I've tried it mouth-to-lung, but because the build platform base is so big, the vapor's just bouncing around inside. You're not getting as sharp a flavor as you would get with the standard rebuildable mouth-to-lung platform that comes with the Cthulhu AIO. If you've got the Cthulhu AIO and you want to do direct-to-lung, get the 520, because it's a phenomenal borrow tank. It really is, it's a phenomenal borrow tank. Anyway, that flavor, seriously. Big thanks. To Cthulhu for sending it over for review. Thought we sucked it to do down below. Thought give that thumbs up. Very fast at the top. You've got the latest video, no matter what video you're watching in the channel. And if that's latest what's up Sunday update vlog in the middle. Shout out to the hashtag Flu Family, the Patreon subscribe stars, and the YouTube members that are keeping Vape Me Vic afloat financially. That's what's been for this studio. And underneath me is the Vape Me Low. Click on that to subscribe. As always, folks. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.